Dave the Butcher Clifford here for WXC on NPN TV as we get ready for WXC 66, which is our ninth annual Night of Champions, January 13th, 2017, inside Crystal Gardens in South Cape, Michigan. Here with co-main event competitor Kyle Prepolik from Windsor, Ontario, Canada. And welcome. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> Good, good. So co-main event uh, coming in against uh, an opponent who had a quick victory in his last contest, getting a quick first round submission in his last WXC fight. Is there any uh, extra approach that you take when, when you know that you're fighting a fairly fresh opponent as opposed to someone who might have went the distance? Um, an opponent's an opponent to me. Like everyone, you know, gets caught and everyone's skilled in so many things. So, you know, it's good for him. He finished the fight real quick and he got a you know solid quick paycheck and you know he made quick use of that guy so I'm gonna try and do the same thing. You gotta hate when uh, you don't have a whole lot of film to look at when someone's finishing fights quickly it makes it a little tougher to expect anything so you gotta expect everything then right? Yeah I'm, I'm just gonna be training to adapt uh, in my camp I, I don't really look at videos as much anymore I like to train everything and you know perfect and try to be that perfect complete fighter. Well, it seems to me like that's a good recipe, seeing as how your last three or four attempts at booking an MMA contest has wound up with injured opponents, opponents getting called up to the UFC. So really preparing for somebody doesn't much pan out when you get to this level, huh? Yeah, like there, there is benefits to looking at videos. Uh, that's just my preference. I don't like, you know, over like hyping it or getting myself more nervous than what I am already am, you know, so I'd rather just be ready and adapt and just uh, going for the kill. What do you know about your opponent then? Um, I know he's a you know like he's a big 155er. I, I think he's a purple belt in jujitsu, so he's a, you know he's got a solid ground game. So he's probably you know a good wrestler, obviously a good grappler. And I don't know how his striking is, but that's fine. I'll go toe to toe with anybody. Absolutely. Now training out of MTC. Give us a little idea of what it's like there. What kind of a group that you've been working with? How long have you been there? And who's your head instructor? Uh, head instructors, yeah, Reno Bill Castro. Um, he's one of the best out there, you know. And uh, there's, uh, you know, at the MTC group, you know, all the fighters and like training partners. There's no egos. Everyone's there to help each other. So we all like nurture each other, and we we help each other out, and we help get to that next level to you know perfect their abilities, you know. And so, having not fought since February of 2016. Uh, earning a, a hard-fought victory over a very tough Adrian Hadrabeyage. Is that due, I mean, it, I noticed that you, a lot of Ontario fighters come to Michigan for their contests because it, it's very difficult to find fights in Ontario. Do you feel comfortable coming over here, and is this like a second home for you? Yeah, I would, I'd consider Michigan like a second home because even in my, like, uh, AMI career, you know, I was, I was always fighting here. They, they didn't have much in Ontario. It wasn't really, like looked at you know now it's starting to like make its way back up but uh there's there's more opportunity over here and you know there's more fighters there's you know there's more shows and you know like in the last events earlier this year in ontario there's a couple canceled events which you know me and other fighters are supposed to fight on and they just got canceled so we got to look wherever the fights are at and we got to take them they pull no punches at the ontario athletic commission that's for sure yeah uh, but we like the benefits so keep doing what you're doing over there because uh, we get some great contests like this matchup against Newport. Um, you know, that's a treat for us in, in, here in America. So 9-4 and four, as a professional, it's easy to talk about wins, but what did you learn from your losses, and what have they done to contribute to your journey in mixed martial arts? Uh, it helped me become you know, a better fighter than what I am now, you know, to improve those little things, those little techniques, those small little things that make huge you know, beneficial parts to my fights where it helps me, you know, get a better position. I think smarter, I'm more experienced now because you learn a lot more from a loss than you do from a win. So ever since those losses, I've just been looking, you know, one day I'll get my revenge and, you know, I'll get my rematch and then I'll show what all my skills all about, what I've learned in that time. Well, one of those losses is current professional lightweight champion at the WXC as well. So perhaps uh, the winner of this contest logically may just get that title shot, and in your case, a rematch. Yeah, that'd be pretty cool. Uh, I'd be down for that. <laughs> right. You know, but of course, I, I don't try to manipulate anyone looking too far forward. you got a heck of an yeah. opponent to get through, that's for sure. And I know that our matchmaker, Michael Pettinelli, has said that this is pretty much a qualifier 
as if, if everything lines up schedule-wise uh, for a title shot down the road, that's for sure. And if Fisher's able to hold on to it, they're going to get a chance to avenge one of those losses. Um, now, for all the fans that are going to be watching this and anybody that is uh, teetering on the brink of whether or not to attend this event, give them a good reason. Tell us what we're going to see in the cage as you step in there with David Newport and let him lock the door. You can see explosions everywhere, whether it's on the ground, standing, wherever it goes. It's, it's going to be exciting, just like I say in every other fight. And it always is, if you watch the last fight, as exciting as ever. That was one heck of a contest, that's for sure. Uh, any words for your opponent before we finish? Just be ready for war, man. That's all I could say. That was Kyle Prepolek, set to take part in the co-main event, WXC 66, at the ninth Annual Night of Champions in the lightweight division versus David Newport. January 13th, 2017, inside Crystal Gardens, Southgate, Michigan. Dave the Butcher Clifford here for WXC as we get ready for the ninth annual Night of Champions, January 13th, 2017 inside Crystal Gardens in Southgate, Michigan. We're here with co-main event competitor in the lightweight division. Two, four and O as a professional, and number six on tapology.com, David Newport, as he gets ready to take on Kyle Prepolek, the Canadian competitor who is quite the veteran in that co-main event. Now, coming off this, uh, first of all, congratulations on your victory at WXC 65. I mean, you made a, a Gracie blue belt tap out in 21 or 22 seconds. First of all, how does that feel to go in there and make quick work, and uh, does that help in preparation for the January fight? You know, I didn't expect a quick fight like that, not 21 seconds. I was ex expecting a war, but he came in for the takedown, obviously, sunk in the choke, and I think I can submit anyone in the lightweight division in the state or region, so I'm confident wherever that goes. It, it felt great. I wish I had more ring time, but it is what it is. Well, there's some big names in that lightweight division. I mean, not just in the UFC, when you talk about people like Kevin Lee and, of course, the recently departed and now successful in Ryzen, Darren Crookshank. I mean, it kind of is Michigan's division. Mm -hmm. now, you've got guys like Justin James. Uh, I think that Adrian Hatrabeaj is, is ranked in that division as well. Of course, you can't look past anyone. Let's talk about Kyle Prepolek. What do you know about your opponent besides that he's a veteran? Have you had much chance to study and what are you looking to work on as far as your strengths going into this fight? Yeah, you know, the video I've seen, um, he's a tough southpaw. He always comes forward. He can take a hit. He's durable. Uh, I'm not confident in his ground ability against mine. He looks like a tough wrestler. I believe he's a blue belt as well, which is like my last opponent. But like I said, my ground is beyond any one lightweight division, I believe, submission-wise. Um, I'm looking for him to push the pace, get in my face, and uh, hit me hard. And he, can, he smiles every time he gets hit hard, so I'm going to have to bring it. And, and do you have anybody in your gym that can kind of emulate that? I know Fuse is, is a, a lot of tough guys, and mm -hmm. there's a lot of good work that goes in there week in, week out, day after day. Anybody that you can liken that style to? Is there anybody that loves to get hit in your gym? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Marco does a, I think, uh, Marco Smallman, he's a southpaw, and uh, he gives me a good look on the uh, same techniques as uh, this guy Kyle does. Um, also training with Adrian, who was coming off uh, a loss against Kyle, his last fight, and Kyle's last fight too. So I've been working with him, game planning, seeing what uh, Kyle throws, and trying to work on some counters. Now in this stack division, again, uh, you know, with... Uh only two losses ever in your career. Do you face the possibility of maybe having to go against uh, someone you've trained with uh, again, like you did with McLaughlin? Um, I don't think so. Uh, I'm getting to that point where I think the regional scene, I'm going to be past that eventually. Um, it's a stacked division, I know, but I'm a huge lightweight, and I'm planning on just taking them out and moving forward as quick as possible. Now, obviously, you've got, you've got a great cast of characters to train with. It looks to me like, like Smallman is an outstanding representative of what Perpolek can bring to you, being mm -hmm. a southpaw and being strong like that. Hard to hit, hard to take down, uh, difficult to hurt. Um, is there anybody on that list ahead of you that you'd like to fight before you do move past this region? I'd like to take them out one by one, but it's getting them to sign that contract's the hard part. So 
We'll see what after this fight, one fight at a time. We'll see who wants to fight. Now, a lot of the, uh, I've seen some chatter uh, on the internet about this co-main event, mm -hmm. and I've seen people calling Preppel like a weak opponent, which I myself, being educated in this business, know he is not. How does that make you feel, and what does that do to motivate you when, when you do read and see things like that? You know, I really don't need motivation to get up to go training. Uh, I know he's a tough cat. All of his losses are to tough guys. Uh, two of the four are currently in the UFC. One being Jason Fisher in Bellator. He's a Bellator veteran himself. Um, all real tough cast of characters that he's lost to. Nine wins. He's nine and four. He has as many as losses. I do wins. So I think I'm taking a step up in competition. I'm excited to show my skills. Yeah, this is a big step forward, and we got to definitely give props to you and your coach and staff for taking a fight, a fight like this. Now, do you have a message for your opponent as we get ready for this contest in January? I just hope he brings it. I've noticed in all of his fights, he seems ready, prepared, and uh, has a solid game plan. So I hope he does the same with me and we go in there and do our thing. And how about for the fans that are gonna be waiting for this co-main event? It's a classic Canada versus USA matchup. He's coming over to try to take a W for me in my home state. So just come and watch me compete. All right, and again, that's the ninth annual Night of Champions at WXC 66, January 13, 2017, inside Crystal Gardens, Southgate, Michigan. Be there.